Welcome to Old Iron Machine Works. A couple videos back I showed this particular engine that we received in the yard and we were part of a team that was uh, swapping it out. But the engine that this is replacing needed a set of standoffs machined. The standoffs are nothing more than couplers that screw on to the head studs and then they got lifting brackets and bolts that bolt it down and they needed 24 of them and I was kind of on crunch time uh, to machine them but anyway this video will basically be just the machining of the standoffs here the, we have the engine that they removed uh, came back to the yard and it'll actually get sent out to the factory for a factory remanufacture rebuild. Uh, right coming up right there, those are the standoffs that I machined. I ended up ordering material, 30 millimeter 4140 materials, not your uh, common material. Um, so I ordered two links, uh, they came in five foot links. Here I got the 24 pieces cut and that's how much remnant piece I have out of each five foot length not enough to have a mess up and here I'm just starting with a plunge and a half inch hole through every piece here I got the tailstock connected to the carriage with the rod that I use you've probably seen it in other videos uh, but most of the machining on this project um, I, I will have the tailstock connected to the carriage the whole time Here you can see my hand just on the, uh, the carriage knob just to keep it from creeping over. And uh, the advantage of doing it this way is I can pull the bit out, get the chips off, crank it right back in, and then start feeding with the tailstock. Rather than cranking the tailstock all the way out to get the chips out or physically having to pull the tailstock back by hand. It, it just makes it so much nicer and quicker. About the only time I gotta crank the tailstock back is when it starts getting out too far or getting close to its maximum travel. And then I'll just crank it all the way back and then just start over again until it gets all the way out. Here I decided to make a drill pilot, and believe it or not, it actually sped uh, things up a whole bunch. Generally, when you're trying to drill the end of a piece of material with a regular drill bit, it's really hard to keep the drill bit from wobbling. And the time involved to put a centering bit in and take it out every time. So I just made this little slug. I just slide on there, slid a spring over the drill bit just to kind of keep the slug on, and then that's basically just the pilot just to keep the drill bit 
uh, straight just to where I can just get a uh, just get it started in the hole a little bit and then I just take it out and then uh, do my drilling it worked great Here, this is nothing more than a result of my wrist getting tired of all the drilling. So I just put a, a ratchet on it, a little cheater, just to make things a little easier. Yeah, I got the holes popped through all 24 of them. Now I moved over to 11 16 bit. And I finally get to use the power feed. I changed the setup a little bit on my rod pulling the tailstock uh, but now I just use the power feed to feed her in All right, here I change the configuration around a little bit. My bar I normally just clamp up that connects to the tailstock. It's just screwed in the end of the uh, Alors. Alors does have a tapped hole, 3 8 of course. And this bar being 3 8 you know, it does have some give to it. Um, clamps loose to where it can slide back and forth. And basically what I do here, I go in there, make my cut, true up the edge. Same time, crank that over, put my chamfer in. This here, I got my tailstock locked. You know, it's just solid. It's just moving, both cutters are moving back and forth. I'd actually come in and make the chamfer after I've shut it off and it's slowing down and it gave me a whole lot less chattering. Okay, I am going to try to run the 20 millimeter and, 20, and 22 millimeter tap in the bridge port. Um, but of course, metric, you know, this is oddball size. So what I had, what I went ahead and did is make a quick little bushing. <laughs> Forget the grinding. I'm kind of in a rush. This job's got to get done sooner than later. But what I got is this set screw here will just go and lock lock that in, help keep that from turning. This is one inch, it just goes in a one inch 
um, R8, you know, for a one inch end mill. And then right here, it bumped the camera. And right here, the set screw will go all the way through that hole. And then I took this tap and I ground it back a little bit. You can kind of see the little indentation where the set screw will lock there. So basically that will slide in like so. And then the tap will slide in like so. These style taps are not designed to just crank them all the way in. They're designed to just go in a little bit, back it off, break, break the chip, go back in. Uh, but they ended up doing such a great job as they progressed uh, in tapping holes. Uh, I could pretty much just crank them all the way in and back out, and they were doing a really nice job. But this was one of the very first ones I did, so I was kind of going in and out with it. Here, this is an older J head uh, Bridgeport mill, and I got it as slow as it'll go, which is uh, 120 RPM. Okay, I already got the piece set. This is my first sample. This one's a machine exactly the size. So now I just want to set it up to where the other ones, I just throw them in and out. So the way I'll do that, each one will go in with the exact same stop here. I go ahead, I went ahead and put a uh, carriage stop right here. I locked it nice and tight where it comes up against it. And then now I'll just take the compound and then I'll just screw the compound in to where I just barely kiss it and my cutter set. From there I just machine them and just crank them in and out until I hit the stop here. Nothing fancy, no, no CNC here. Now here I have the stop set for the carriage for the cutter so it'll cut it perfectly linked. So I do have to crank the tail stock in and out uh, on this particular cut. Okay, I got the uh, 24 of the 20 millimeter all tapped. You can't even tell. I ordered brand new taps for McMaster car. Uh, let's see, quality SP USA, not really sure. SP series, not really sure who makes it, but very nice tap. Now I'm ready to switch over to the 22 millimeter. Um, it's been a long weekend. I'm getting tired, I gotta finish it up. So rather than making another one of these, I'm gonna go ahead and just bore the inside to fit this tap. This here was the one inch, this fits it up inside of the, the R8. And then um, the two set screws, this set screw goes all the way through that hole. 
and locks in. Well, and you, you know, just like so. Anyway, let's get that board out. Here I did the same thing I did to the 20 millimeter tap. I wanted the tap to go into that slug as far as it'll go. So on one side there I just kind of grounded a little uh, farther down just so the tap would go up in it farther. Here I was just cranking the tap all the way in and all the way out and it was doing a great job. So uh, it takes a lot of power to crank a 22 uh, millimeter tap in. Okay, this is the last one, number 48 hole to be tapped. So let's see if I can do this with holding the phone and not break something. As you notice, I've been giving it plenty of juice. And I'm just ramming her on. As always, I want to thank my new subscribers, and if you uh, enjoy these type of videos, uh, or enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, and if you're not a subscriber and you like this kind of content, um, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Once again, I appreciate it.